Next up is the Cunningham. This can be quite fiddly. Um, there's not enough rope in the system to get this out far enough, so it's always tricky to get the Cunningham on. You've got to use some brute force. I use a particular system where I've got three to one before I attach to the um, to the main system. Okay, I've got this fairing here, which is fiddly sometimes you can see it gets caught up it's getting worse as it gets older because it's already been caught once or twice before now I just tie this on here but I'm sure there's a better method but for now it'll do You can use this like a boat breaker to um, do this job. It's actually easier with a boat breaker. Uh, you just wrap a system around here somewhere and pull it down and cleat it, and then tie the Cunningham on. The Cunningham on, I can now pull this roughly into position, which helps to get in the boom on. I'm just going to check the cams haven't capsized, haven't, turned, haven't done that as I pull it on. The long cams are more prone to it than the short cams. Right, to go back to the piece of string I mentioned earlier, tied to this lower cam. I mentioned earlier um, that it's tied onto the tack of the sail. So this piece of string ties onto here and then to the, to the um, Cunningham arrangement fitting here. It's permanently on, once it's on, it's on. And what this does is as I, as this cam is the most highly loaded in terms of the compression into the mast. It tends, when you pull a Cunningham on, it wants to leave the cam behind and do this. This piece of string basically stops that from happening. It's pretty straightforward, so um, as you pull the Cunningham on, it drags the cam down with it. So we're on, the cams are square, not capsized, not tilted, so we're good to go. That one's the same, this one's, an ex this one's prone to it as well, but this one's gone straight on, no problem. The, the, up the upper ones seem less prone to it, probably because there's less load on them. It's next up the boom. These are quite fiddly because they're longer than the, um, the, 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 the van system can stop you getting this on. Um, and it, there's never enough range in the system to get this off far enough. So I've put this system on, which is stolen from the laser sailors, where they use it for the toe straps, I believe. It's a simple system where you can vary the length of the first strop, which slackens and tightens the van. Um, so you can, for rigging, you can have it all the way off, which gives, makes the van really slack. But would be too slack for when you're rigged you wouldn't be able to have enough van range so um, for rigging that makes it very simple and easy so that's borrowed from the laser sailors shown to me by Paul Goodison this can be fiddly in a breeze as it the mass spins around out of control trying to get this in is like playing the golden shot for the older older members of the moth fraternity if you pull a bit of Cunningham on at this stage it helps get a get the uh, clue on at the back because it drops the clue down and actually makes this much easier. Again, another reason to having this system that over slackens the kicker is it makes this bit easier. You're not fighting to get this on. Because in very strong winds, the mainsail will be flapping about like mad and trying to get this on a nuisance. So uh, if you're really struggling and the boat wants to capsize when you, when, every time you try it, I would probably go to the beach with this on with this like this and then do it roll the boat over and then put this on but today we can do it in this situation because it's not very windy so I've got a Dyneema strop which is preset length pre-made um, it's snug fit on the boom very snug fit in fact I've got to manipulate things a little to get it on we're always fighting in the moth for getting under the boom but we also want the leech as long as possible for aerodynamic reasons. So there's no point in having a big gap between the boom and the sail. 
uh, for the same aerodynamic reasons. You don't really want air getting under that gap. In, in an ideal world, you close the gap to the boom, um, which is like adding span length. Span length uh, reduces induced drag, so it's always a good thing to do. Um, no outhaul this year. This is the first time I've ever not had a proper outhaul. Um, for simplification reasons, I've gone to a string with knots in. Um, I'm not sure I really like it very much, but I'm persevering. Uh, it's quite fiddly uh, to get this perfect. I'll actually see how close some of the knots are. Um, so we're on that setting today, I think. We're on that setting today. How do you know what setting? Well, basically, uh, once you've got the thing set up, everything tight, uh, kicker and cutting them on max, I basically have this so, it's so the, the foot is tight against the, the boom. From there, you can make small adjustments with the knots to get it slightly slacker or slightly tighter. But clearly, you can't have it tighter than the sail will physically go, otherwise you'll break the sail. So you've got to make sure you've got Max Cunningham and Max Kicker on when you try it, when you set this up uh, to get the initial setting for it. Now, I'm doing something a little bit unusual here. I've made some little slots in the foot tape. And I'm tying the foot onto the boom. The boom's 90 millimetres wide. And if you have the sail above the boom, you'd like, you've got a sail, the sail stops, the air goes underneath it, and then you've got a boom, just in the airflow doing nothing. If you can tie, if you can attach the, the sail to the boom, you do, in theory, get a small increase in span, which, although it's not, although the boom itself isn't very aerodynamic, it's not, hasn't got a shape to it, particularly, it's just a straight line, it will offer some uh, end plate effect, uh, limited, I agree, but some. So all, all I'm trying to do here is, um, is sort of end plate the sail on the boom. Um, it's a very basic way of doing it, but it's just something I've just started trying recently. So it means when I let the Cunningham off, this will still stay on top of here and it won't, um, won't create a gap. We've got the basic set up, the boat's ready to go really. Look how slack the boom is, thanks to the laser method. We don't have any issues of the thing being over tight at this point. When we're ready to go, we simply get our little system here. This is basically a th um, three to one system. No, three to two, I think it is. I'm not clever enough to work this out. Maybe you've got three there and two here. And as you pull this on, it tightens the system because you're pulling, you're pulling three times to two times. As you can see now, you can really tighten it up. Um, if I wanted to get that tighter, I'd let these off more. We can do that later before going sailing and keep tightening it and tightening it. And that extends the range of the kicker. Because I mean, that's the range what we can use, a usable range of the last purchase. So the tighter they make this, the more range we've got. Also, you can see I've increased the range compared to a lot of boats by angling that back. Uh, it's right under the Vang now, a Vang, po um, Vang takeoff system. And I've got that very, very long length. This is 32 to 1, which you need. I think, on modern moths. Um, some people are higher than that still. 32 is okay. I never pull it as hard as I can, so I don't think I need to go any higher, but some people have. Um, right. Essentially, now the boat's ready to take to the beach, turn on its side, go and get changed, put the foils in, go sailing. 